also weighing in on some other topics affecting your area, Canada. You're in Toronto right now. And Justin Trudeau, he interrupts a woman at a town hall. She's asking him a question, and he didn't like one of the words that she used. Listen to this soundbite, and then uh, we'll get your reaction. All right. So that's why we came here today to ask you to also look into the policies that religious charitable organizations have in our legislation so that it can also be changed because maternal love is the love that's going to change the future of mankind. So we'd like you to look uh, we, we like to say people kind, not necessarily mankind, because uh, yeah. it's more inclusive. There we go, exactly. <laughs> and the crowd roars. Yeah. Well, it's quite, the, it's quite the performance. I mean, I'm afraid that our Prime Minister is only capable of running his ideas on a few very narrow ideological tracks. We saw the first evidence of that when he put his cabinet together. He insisted upon making it 50 percent women, despite the fact that only about 22 percent of the elected MPs were women. And it was easier for him to do that than it was for him to screen people for the sort of competence that would actually be necessary mm. to be cabinet members. So we've seen a fair bit of this behavior, but that was the most egregious example, I suppose. Dr. Peterson, he I recall you uh, taking some heat because you said you would refuse to use these gender neutral pronouns. Why was that? Well, I actually said that I would refuse to use the pronouns that were mandated by law because they were mandated by law. I feel that it's completely inappropriate of the government to decide what language the citizenry should speak. There's never been an example of that in British common law history, and I believe that that was a very, very bad precedent. I didn't want to use language that I thought was generated by radical leftist propagandists, and so I said I wouldn't do it. I saw one tweet this morning that said Neil Armstrong should have said one small step for people kind. Yeah, well, you know, Trudeau was listening to an earnest woman try to discuss something important, and he interjected an ideological um, statement in the middle of the dialogue, and that indicates, I think, precisely the way he thinks. And I don't think he does think. I think he runs an ideology in his head and accepts the output without question. And I think we're really going to pay for it in Canada in ways that we can't yet imagine. Well, we're going to find out because you believe it's coming to us here in America and you've been to both countries uh, frequently. Now let's talk about something else that builds on your premise. This whole father-daughter yeah. dance that are being canceled around the country because of gender guidelines. Even Donald Trump, Trump Jr. weighed in with this quote. The father-daughter dances inherently leave people out, not just because of transgender status, just life in general. These can be really uncomfortable and triggering events. That, according to Jared Fox, New York City Department of Education. So that's their response to cancel the dance because uh, there's a lot yeah. of people that can't go. Is there a problem with that? Well, the problem with that is self-evident, but it's part of this absolute onslaught by the radical leftists on the fundamental normative structures of our culture. And if you're going to cancel everything that's triggering to everyone, then you're going to cancel everything altogether. Because there isn't a single thing that anyone can ever say or do that isn't going to offend someone. And the idea that this is being done so that certain people's feelings won't be hurt, I think, is absolutely absurd. It's not compassion and care that's driving this. It's the desire to put forward a very pernicious ideology. And it's being, ve it's being very, very successful in its application. But, uh, Dr. Peterson, they say that they're doing that to make things more inclusive. Yeah, well, they say all sorts of things. And they are a very small, noisy, dangerous minority. And it's really appalling that we're bending over backwards to, um, to, to do their bidding without question you under know, the name of compassion. A lot of my friends have been posting pictures of the daddy-daughter dance recently, and I think the pictures are so cute. Are little girls going to miss out on, on this, on a memory? Well, uh, yes, for, for sure. And the thing is that even your terminology when you're talking about little girls is something that's going to be increasingly forbidden as we demolish the classic gender ideas and no one's going to benefit from that and people it's going start, to be a real catastrophe I, I mean people are even talking about deciding on what gender they uh, they're going to be as youngsters yeah well that's happening all over it's it's an absolute epidemic and we've decided that children as young as three or four can now decide what gender they are and then undergo the appropriate surgical and biological alterations to bring their morphology in keeping with that. And 
It's a mistake of epic proportions, and we're going to pay for it in a big way. We do hear of that, but how often does that happen? It happens increasingly. Like in, in Britain in 2015, there were, I think, 57 kids um, in the gender dysphoria clinics, and last year there were 2,000. All right. Uh, he's got a great book out there, great uh, number-wise right now, number one in Amazon. It's called 12 Rules for Life. Dr. Jordan Peterson, thank you very much for joining us today from Canada. Thank you. Thanks very much for the invitation.